Let's go. Cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our next athlete interview. Uh, this one is a special uh, knucklehead and guest. Uh, been around him for a long time. And uh, it's interesting because it's, I think, probably the first time we'll ever record a call. Um, most of those are, are um, some really cool conversations that I don't think you guys get to see an inside look at what it's like for the journey of an athlete. I think, you know, there's a lot of people that represent um, you know, what it's like to go through the process, um, you know, at, at a high level and they kind of, you've seen them have like, um, late success in their careers. Uh, this athlete specifically, you know, I mean, I don't, I, I like to kind of get into it, but I don't think he's touched a, a, a ball or, or, or a sport that he hasn't had success with. You know, now there's a lot of work that was put in, but you know, he's a pretty good athlete. And, and there's a, there's a level of that, that I think that, you know, when you see people, you always think that they're freaks and, and this in Des Moines specifically is a kid that could just make things happen. He's a gamer. Um, but there's also a lot of work that goes into it. And, and I want to talk about this journey from, you know, childhood to college through the pros and uh, what that looks like from somebody who has put the work in combined with the talent um, and just kind of put his head down with a, with a very selfish focused mentality and, and is represented what it means to be a pro, you know, pretty much for a very long time. Um, now I first met Dormorne uh, through uh, coach Henderson uh, when he was kind of coming into high school. So I've been with him for a long time. I've known, um, I've seen him go through this. So there's a development aspect to, to what happens uh, with the player. There's a, a component to um, the transitional periods when someone goes from, you know, high school to college, college to the pro, pro to, you know, how to stay on the team, how to make, you know, always make a roster spot. And he, he's always known how to do that. Um, and he understands how to like, be in that locker room and be the guy at the same time, understanding what those roles is in the ne those next, uh, the, the next place that he's in. So I want to kind of get into that. Um, and I really wanted to talk about your story. So like right now, you, you know, you're currently signed with the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Um, and, you know, working back, you know, before that, you know, had a lot of, uh, you know, had a, had a career where you're at different, different uh, um, pro programs um, but even going back into, into college, you know, you were, you were the guy, um, you, you walked in there, freshman, all American at Nebraska. Uh, but even like to get there, people don't realize like you weren't really highly recruited the way that you should have been. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that coaching change, you know, um, you know, notoriety in the area. People don't remember the, the DMV when it wasn't a hotbed. You know, they don't, they don't remember what it was like before when someone said you were, you were coming out of Northern Virginia or, or the DMV, they actually considered it basically like PG County or Virginia beach. That's it. Like that was it. Like it was, there was, there was no in between. And it was kind of like, like, uh, like every once in a while you might have somebody, but it, it wasn't really a focal spot at all. Um, the area was highly overlooked for a period of time. It's, it's gotten better since since I've gotten out of high school, actually. And it's like, I'm seeing kids, like, getting offers and everything. I'm like, where, like, where were these people, like, when I was in high school? Like, like, what, like what's up with that? There, and, the, and the reality is, is there wasn't a lot of talent there um, to be seen. And there wasn't a lot of people that were, like, looking for those guys. And, and then your class came around. Like, it really was. Like, people don't realize, like, the, the three-year window, your – freshman, sophomore year till, you know, your senior year was the window of the most talent. The amount of NFL guys in that class that we had had from day one, from scratch that we developed, but that also had the talent, the work ethic, and everything in between was unbelievable. I joke around like our seven on seven team, right? Like our yeah. seven on seven team and, the, and, and just the, the kids that we would work out with, we were beating other seven on seven teams that were part of our group because we were so good that the third and fourth string guy had to go to another team. Yeah. Cause they weren't going to get any reps. Oh. Um, I mean, was it like AJ was the, was a, was a freshman and like a third string guy, you know, on our, our roster and then goes to Ohio state. So, you know, I, I laugh, I laugh about that because people don't realize uh, kind of the, the depth of talent, but also like the work ethic. I mean, our summers, man, our, our summers were tough. Like, I, I, there was a tough – yeah, we, we got – I mean, it was multiple-hour days. 
but it, it, it laid the foundation to, you know, just to get at, after it and, you know, just to push through things. And it's, it's funny because it's like, you look back at it and it's like, I, to be honest, like those workouts were actually probably, I would say were harder than like college workouts. But the thing like with college is just like, everybody was good to be on your toes at all times. So, I mean, that, that was just like really the, the biggest difference for real, for real. But I mean, you, you, you know how to beat people, you know how to play against people, you know, your strength and like that. I mean, we, we have been, we have been toning up for years before I even got to a college program. So, I mean, they were, they were there. It's just, you know, different terminology, different coaching and everything like that. But I mean, it, it, it was the same. And at a young age, it was just like, I mean, you, trained that way so I mean it's funny to see like how like it all pans out and it's very similar yeah let's let's rewind the tape a little bit and talk about like kind of that foundation though so you started off uh you know was football always your first love was it basketball what was it what what kind of got you started with from a sports standpoint to be honest like uh, my, my first year of football like I hated football like I didn't I wasn't even it wasn't to think like my third plan like once I was playing like with my cousin and like that around in the local league and everything like when it kind of like uh, took off um, as I up, I got to a crossroad where I thought I loved basketball more than football quickly. Um, but I mean, it it was it was a release from from everything. I had fun with it. Uh, all my friends played on local leagues and everything like that. So I mean, it, it was just an outlet. I mean, and it paved me to get. Uh, a degree paved me to to play in, in a great stadium and now playing on a professional level. So I mean, it's just it's just always been a, a stable foundation for me. And I mean, I found that at age. Um, I had a little league coach who was a military minded type man, and I mean, he he laid a strong foundation that got up until around about a time to where I found out you and I found Coach Henderson. I mean, and then that took things to like a different level. And then so on and so forth. And in each level that I've went it went to, I mean, it, I've worked on something differently. Uh, just taking in different coaching and being coachable, and just you know, just knowing the situation and just playing your cards right, honestly. So, what going back to the um, the outlet, like the outlet of sports, like I tell people all the time, um, like sports for me, like practice those hours, like. It's the one time in your life that you're not thinking about anything else. You're not thinking about like what's going on with your family. You're not thinking about what's going on with your financial situation. Like you're not thinking about, you know, uh, like that class or that work that you have to do. You're not thinking about your relationships. What was early on sports for you? Like what was the outlet from? Just a uh, home life. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, from my side of the highway and everything like that, my family situation, it wasn't the best situation growing up. I was raised by my grandparents. Uh, mother was like in and out of my life and everything like that. My sister was another strong point in raising me and everything like that. So, I mean, it was just a, a lot of things like that were really missing. I mean, you get on the football field and everybody puts their pants on just like you. So, I mean, and it got to a point to where it, the competitiveness, like, I mean, that the, the competitiveness is, like, really what drove me to push and everything like that. We used to do competition stuff at the end of the day. And, I mean, it, it, it was fun to me. But, I mean, later on, you find out those type of things that get you through a game. So, I mean, it's just the, the competition games, running back, uh, finishing, the, the, the benching uh, games and everything. You know me, we'll go at it for hours. So, I mean, it, it was always it was always something. But. Um, it just t it took me away from, you know, the, the living situation and having to deal with that, being frustrated or, or whatever it was. And, you know, my grandparents were both pastors and they, they were strict. So if it, if it was getting away from that for a little bit, I mean, any little bit helped uh, in, in, the, in the long end. Absolutely. And I think what's really unique is that, you know, you, you didn't use it. You never you never use that as a leverage point in your life. You've always said, like, you're your own man. And I think that's something that I look back now and I think about you as a young man and your development and who you are today, being a dad, like it's something that, you know, I have a lot of pride in the relationship that you and I have because, you know, you've always been your own man, even though other people have been there to support you. They've never really kind of, they've never been there to catch you. They've never been there to, um, there was no handouts in DeMornay's life. There was like legitimately opportunity. Oh, our way. Yeah. And I, but I don't think people understand that. I, I really don't. I don't think people understand. Like, they see where you are. They see the situation that you're in. You did use sports to leverage environments so that you got into rooms that you had no business to be involved in. 
you got into environments that you had no business being allowed into those environments, but you did that through sports by handling yourself, but you always did that by being your own man. You know, and what, for me, what I'm curious to know, um, you never had one figure that you wanted to kind of be like, you always said, this is for you. This is yours. You know, what's defined that? What's been the center of that? What's the thing that drove you to say, okay, I'm going to do this for me, not for other people. Cause there's a lot of people that said you couldn't do it too, but you've always said, Hey, even when there's people that said, I can do it, but you're going to do it my way. If you do it with me, they've always tried to take credit. Why is it that you've tried to do it your way? Why is it that you're doing it for yourself? Is there a sense of like fulfillment or just a sense of saying, Hey, listen, you know, I, I, at the end of the day, like I'm responsible. What, what is those, what are the things that made you do it for you? Um, like early on in life, like I found out, like it, it was hard for me to account to, to account on people for people to like be there and everything like that. So I, like, I literally had to do not everything all by myself, but you know, like every now and then, like I would have people to help me. But when it came down to it, like it, it was always a pinch and count on somebody to be there for me. So it was just no matter what, like, I know I'm always have my own back. I'm always make sure, you know, I'm good regardless of whatever, which is why somewhat I'm stubborn ish now. But um, like, I won't, I won't go broke or I won't go bad when knowing like, I know if, if nobody else got me, I got me. So it was just always making sure, you know, pushing myself to my limits and past my limits. It, it was just because of, you know, like if ain't nobody else going to do it, like I'm going to do it period. And you can't like you, you're not going to be able to take that away from me. You, you you can't say like, Oh, I helped you with this and this. You may have got me to the door, but when it came time for, for something to make happen, like I made it happen when it needed to happen on the field, off the field, handling myself correctly in the po po correctly, politically correct way. Um, conversations here and there. I mean, so, I mean, it was just always making sure that I was on my toes and making sure that, um, you know, it's a crazy world we live in. Like, I mean, people have their own motives and everything like that. And I just wanted to, to make sure that it, it, there was no way possible to where somebody could take the credit or take something away from me that I know I worked hard for. So I made sure I did it myself. Yeah. And there's a lot of times in your career where people, because of your upbringing, because of the, the environments that you were growing up in, they would always try to like, they would always try to find a way to position you like that and be like, they try to like identify you like that. And they'd be like, Oh, well, it's because of those reasons. And then you made it very clear. We're like, that's fine. You can look at other people like that, but you're going to give me, whether it be the benefit of the doubt, you're going to give me a fair shot. Cause I'm going to prove to you who mm -hmm. I am. And, and you're not going to just take kind of the, uh, the label yeah. as who you were. Like you've never accepted that label. And, and, that's, there's a lot to be said about that because you've walked into a room where people have labeled you and then by the end of that week, there's a totally different opinion. What, what about every one of those experiences do you have when you like you went over a coach, you went over a room, whether it be by your playing ability or your conversation? Like I know you're a smooth talker, but you get the job done and sometimes you're really quiet. I, I don't think people that know you know that, that you talk and you like to have fun, but I don't think a lot of people know the quiet side of the morning, the one that just puts his head down and works and says, you know what, keep talking, but you're not going to be able to defend me. Um, you know, uh, it, it's proving people wrong. That's, that was another key point in, in driving, and, you know, people putting their own foot in their mouth. Um, it, 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 it excited me. It gave me the, uh, an adrenaline rush because it was like at the end of the day, you had to look in like you, you can't defeat the facts and the facts is that you were wrong or whatever you judged me just how I walked in how I looked or, or whatever when it wasn't like that at all so I mean the satisfaction of people actually saying that they're wrong and changing their opinion I mean you know that was another big part that of me pushing in the way that I was and everything like that's fine and then you can talk and everything like that but I mean the the most the person that talks the most in the room is isn't probably the strongest so I mean it was just I mean you talk a lot you obviously if, if you talk a lot I feel like you you at some point in time you're going to tell your weakness or your, something's going to come out to where it'll be used against you so it's like if I never talk if I never really do anything you really can't figure out where I'm coming how I'm coming exactly what I'm going to do it's just you, you would see from actions and it's that's I kind of adapted it just showing you versus really telling you I mean and you've taught me a, a lot of that just on, you know, actions speak louder than words and everything like that. So it's just, and it does, I mean, saying, saying a lot is one thing, but actually doing it 
day in and day out to where you change people's outlook and everything. Like, I mean, you kind of live for that. And it's you at the, at the end of the day, you can go home knowing that you did everything that you, that you did possibly in your ability and whatever is left out there. I mean, that's on them to make, if they still make the wrong decision, but you know, you did everything. I mean, you can't be wrong at it. Can't be mad at it either. Well, there, there's two things I want to bring up. One, I want to, I want to circle back to high school a little bit because like two, my favorite, one of my favorite plays is in practice, which went viral, which is fun. It's a, it's, that's a fun one. It's on ESPN. But the other one is, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was against uh, West Springfield. I'm not sure. Um, but it's literally you're playing quarterback and you're basically, they, the coach was like, look, we're not going to blitz them. We're not going to send anybody out there. We're going to put 11 guys and we're just going to cover everybody that goes out. We're not going to rush him because if we rush him, he's going to run and would rather let his arm do the talking than his legs do the talking because we already know what the end result's going to be. Yeah. And I think you were back there for like 12, 13 seconds. Easily. Before you finally said, I think I just got to put this in the end zone. Yeah. Um, it was West Springfield. I want to say my senior year, I think it was like maybe the sixth, fifth game or something like that. Um, my senior year, our quarterback, uh, went down, uh, messed up his elbow and everything like that. And our coach is pretty much like, like, I don't have nobody else. Like you gotta, you gotta do it. Mind you, this is, I've already committed to Nebraska. I've, I'm already, I'm playing receiver. So I already don't want to like do too, too much because of you know, afraid of getting injured or whatnot. But um, yeah, the whole game, I probably maybe about two minutes in, into it. Um, they really weren't just rushing at all. And it was actually uh, one of their dudes actually rushed and you can hear like, if you were at the game, you can hear the coach literally scream. No, like, and he literally stopped on a dime and went back across the line just because they just didn't want me to, to run it and everything like that. But funny thing is, like, I played quarterback all growing up in Little League, so a lot of people I don't think knew that I can actually throw as well as I did and everything like that. So it was, it was funny to me. It was just like, okay, wait until, like, you know, my receivers get f further down the field, and I can throw the ball pretty far. So I was pretty accurate with it. But after West Springfield, every other team – took that same rule to where they were not trying to rush me at all and just were trying to make me beat them by throwing the ball. So, I mean, it was funny. It was a small adjustment, and I figured it out after a while. What's the uh, what's your favorite moment uh, in college? You're at Nebraska freshman year. You know, you ended up coming out there as an All-American, had a great year. What's your favorite moment uh, so far at the high school and college level? College, I would say my favorite moment, uh, we play in Michigan State. Uh, I think it was my second punt return that I took back uh, my freshman year. Um, I think they were the number six team and we were the number eight team in the nation. Uh, I think we both were undefeated. Um, if you win that game, you're pretty much going to the Big Ten Championship. Um, and uh, it was late in the game. I think we were down by like nine or something like that. And uh, our defense – uh, one of one of my old teammates, uh, Jay Mitch, he was a corner. He was he was talking to me, and I uh, and I told him I was like, man, if y'all get a three and out, the next punt return, I'll I'll put it in. I'll I'll take it back for a touchdown. And he was like, he was like, all right, bet. He shook my hand, was like, deal. So literally, the next series, they went three and out. And if you go back and watch the game and everything, you could see Jay Mitch walking off the field, like literally John at me. It was like, all right, we did our part. Like now it's you. Uh, Mike Sadler, may he rest in peace. He died with uh, my teammate and everything like that. He punted the ball. Um, next thing I know, I think 60, 70 some yards later, uh, 70 some, 70 some yards later, we score. We only down by five late in the game. Um, we got a chance to win. All they need to do is score. We didn't stop them the last two, three times. So, I mean, that was, that was probably one of my favorite memories in, uh, in, and in college, in high school, I would probably say picking off Caleb just because he was talking so much. <laughs> uh, and you, you, you know how he is, like, and you, and you know he was. We're gonna crush y'all, this and that, and, and you know, Puentes was on his type of thing and everything like that. And Caleb was the best quarterback, this and that, and he had this and he had that and everything like that. And just a year before, it was like, man, like we were brothers and everything like that. It's like you know, you know what I can do. Like, and you're going to piss me off. So, I mean, picking off Caleb was probably – and I picked him off twice that game. It was, I would say, probably one of my favorite uh, high school 
uh, moments because, uh, I mean, he knew and he still tested me and he got burned. They end up still winning the game, but they won the game by going away from me. So, I mean, it wasn't really too much I could do. So, I mean, but that, that those are two, two of my favorite memories. And then, um, so it's funny because I, I'm a little bit nuts and most people that know me, I'm a little bit crazy sometimes. There's one position I refuse to ever play and I will never have an interest in playing and that's punt returner because I'm the guy with the mentality that I want to take your head off. Um, and, you know, I'm not a really big fan of people like you that just do those one little moves and then, you know, end up on a highlight tape in the wrong spot. But what's the, what's the mindset of a returner knowing that you have 11 guys trying to literally rip your head off and, and that's their only job for that one play? What's the mindset when that ball's in the air? What's, what's going through your head? Um, if you hit me, you better, you, like, you better not miss. Cause if you miss or you piss me off, then the next one I'll make you pay. Um, as far as it, I mean, the game, it, it slows down to me. Um, like I, I get a rush from it. Um, one or two, two moves, a, a, a shuffle, making a dude miss. And I mean, it's, it could, it could, it could be it. it. It could be a touchdown. And I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an energy boost. It's a game change in play. And uh, I mean, it, it can save a game. It can put away a game. Uh, it can bring you back in a game. I mean, just special teams are hitting yardage in the game of football. I mean, to be able to 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 change field like that and put the pressure on uh, an op- on your opponent. And I mean, you know, pressure bust pipes. I mean, and if you, if you if you hitting on all cylinders, I mean, you can't stop it. So I mean, it's just, it's just an adrenaline rush for me. I've I've had a knack for it. I, I like to do it. I don't mind. I'm not scared to do it. I mean, uh, that's the, the first rule we're going out there. Like you can't be scared. You playing football. So I mean, you're gonna get hit regardless. Um, that's why I said like if if you hit me, you better make sure it's a good shot. Because if it's not, I play better when I'm pissed off. So I mean that that's just how I feel about it. And uh, I've had a couple of lessons from uh you know Johnny Rogers. He's a legend in the football world, in the college football world. I mean, he, he, he's, he's like a big uncle to me. And, I mean, he the one thing he's told me is don't be afraid to catch the ball. So, I mean, uh, he was at practice a lot. He's called me and had conversations. We've talked about catching punts and everything like that. So, I mean, just having, uh, you know, guys like that who are legends in, in college football just talk to you about little things and everything like that. Like, you have to, you have to live up to it. You have to do it. Yeah, so what, what's it like playing in a place like Nebraska? I've, you know, I've been able to, to watch a lot of those games there at Nebraska. Um, I think it's one of the most intelligent crowds. I mean, you could hear a pin drop on offense, and on defense you can't hear yourself think. It's a very unique environment. I mean, when Nebraska's on the field for offense, I could, I could hear the clap no matter wherever I am in the, in the stadium. But on defense, you can't even talk to the person next to you. Well, what's that like for the, from an environment standpoint, not just in the game, but, but even outside of the game? I mean, Lincoln becomes, you know, I think the largest city in, uh, in Nebraska only on one day and on Saturdays during football. Um, it's controlled chaos. It's absolute mayhem. Uh, Nebraska fans are the most passionate fans in college football, period. They're second to none. Um, my first time out there, I was like, oh, okay, like, yeah, like, it was, it was pretty loud and everything like that. And then when we, when we came out for the tunnel walk, I was like, whoa, like, oh, okay. It's, they're, they're passionate. They're real fans. Um, they love you. They love hard. It's just you have to experience it. Like, there's no words that I can technically say to to get you to understand unless, like, you go to a game and you walk in and you you see it for yourself. As an opponent, like, it's not an easy place to play in. And, I mean, if it's a rivalry game, it, it's 10 it's ten plus on. Um, I know my freshman year, we played Miami on the anniversary that um, – that Nebraska played them in the national championship and beat them. And I'll probably say that was the loudest game that I've ever been a part of, period. Like, Kenny wasn't even four feet away from me, and I I couldn't hear him on the field. Mind you, we're on offense, and I couldn't hear him talk. So, I mean, that that place is just nuts. It's crazy on game day, but, I mean, it gives you energy. They 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 they're they're ready to go. So I mean, they're, and they're ready for a show. So I mean, I, I love Lincoln. Nebraska is, is is my second home, and it there there's literally no place like Nebraska for real. No, it's it's awesome. It's really cool. 
experience. It's really cool experience to see. If you haven't been out there, I highly recommend it. Um, you've always been a student of the game. You know, you've, you've high school, you know, college, the playbook, understanding like what you like, understanding where you fit too, like in regarding the role, not just necessarily what the what's the strategy the coach is using, but understand how you might be moving into different positions. Now you go into the NFL. Um, and, and this is you two, three years in the league um, now. What, um, how much is it like, and how much work is put in to study the playbook? How hard is it? What, what, you know, people, I don't think people understand like the full time job of being a student of the game and being an, a, at the expert level of, of, of your position. What does it take? Man, it takes everything. Um, I feel like it's a hundred times harder than in college. Um, in college, you have a safety net. And in the NFL, it's cut. The, there's no safety net at all. Like, if you, if you don't know what you're doing, you will be gone by the end of practice. Like, I've seen dudes get cut at practice. Like, won't even let – like, get to the field. And it, it's just – I mean, you, you, you have to know. Like, there, there, there's no mistakes – I mean, and they expect you to know. You don't have school. You don't have anything else. All you got going on is football, and they expect you to know it. They don't care if they just implemented it 15 minutes ago. They don't care how many plays it is. They don't care how hard it is. Like, you have to know. There's no exceptions. There's no. There's nothing, at least for the undrafted. Um, drafted, they get a little bit more leisure just because, you know, they are a little bit more invested. But even still, once it gets to a certain point, they'll cut ties with you. They, they, they don't care. It's cutthroat um, because, I mean, their job is, is on the line. Their their family is on the line. So, I mean, if if you're not producing and everything like that, like that coach can be fired. Um, it's it's kind of like that in college football, but they, they give you a little bit more leisure. You got a safety net. If you don't get it, um, they, they can't take your scholarship away. So, I mean, you, you, can, you can mess around and joke around and everything like that, and you can take a year to kind of get things. You can red shirt. You can not take stuff serious. In the NFL, they, they're, there's no not taking it serious. If you don't take it serious, you won't be there long. You, yeah. Like, you literally, it's quicker than a hiccup. Like, no, yeah. like, no. Red so, shirt year in the NFL means retired because you might well just give it up. That's what much. that means. Pretty much. So now, you know, how many hours, how, how long do you spend studying the playbook? Uh, anywhere from a day? Well, let's just say a week. Mm, I, I would say it's probably, that's a lot, close to – 30 hours probably. So a full-time job of just studying. And I wanted to put this in perspective because the amount of nights that you close the gym, because we're on the whiteboard, not because I'm here to help you in any way, but just so I could just bounce questions at you. So you could know every little adjustment, you know, um, I, 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 we had Nate on talking about having his wife um, just question him over and over again so that he gets in a rhythm every single night. Um, I'm probably not as good looking as her, um, you know, that's, that's unfortunate for you, but just the, the constant dialogue, the constant questions that you have to ask the, the constant kind of like, um, flashcard structure of studying that these kids don't even understand at the high school level, let alone when they get to college, how much further along would they be if they just took the time to learn their position at a high level? It would, it would be way further along. Things would be way more easier. Um, you would pick up on stuff faster. Mind you, like, you, you're just talking about plays. You didn't even talk about coverages. Like, so, yeah, you can be running this, but, I mean, cover six, cover four, cover two, palms, like, what, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you always have some type of sight adjustment to it. Then hand sig the different type of signals or the different type of plays that the quarterback can give you and everything like that. Like, you got to know it all. So it's not just – there's no really little pieces. There are There are a lot of – little pieces but you got to make sure you know them all to adjust or i mean you just won't be there long but um i flashcards whiteboard i can't tell you how many notebooks i i didn't ran through i have around um recordings i i, I send my sister a script she, or she'll call me on facetime and she'll say to play out loud 
and I'll write it on a whiteboard, uh, take a picture of it, and then find it in the iPad just to see if I'm right. Um, just the verbiage. I mean, I know Coach Gruden has different types of recordings of him going over installs, him going over certain plays and everything. So you hear him talking of why uh, we do this and if it's just certain type of looks and everything like that. Even uh, last week we was out there um, with DC. Like, I mean, that's different because uh, of the circumstances and everything like that. Um, he He's going over stuff explaining exactly why this. So, I mean, it's just you, you find different ways to, to – to get it to stick. Um, and it, you, you'd be surprised at, at the different ways you can come up to uh, if you're passionate about something, if it matters to you of getting, of getting it to, to, to stick on your mind and everything like that. You'd be surprised. I mean, the mind is, is a strong tool. And they, I mean, some people are creative with, with how they do certain stuff. So, I mean, it's how important is it for you to be on the same page as your quarterback? You're with DC. He knows the game. I mean, how is it, how important is it for you guys to be on the same page, even, um, you know, you've been, been with a lot of different quarterbacks over the years, and you know the difference between, the, like, them knowing where you're going to be and trusting that route and trusting your hands, too. Um, it's different because, I mean, if, you, if you're not on the – because every, every day everybody gets evaluated. So if, if, you, if the play doesn't go well, if you don't catch the ball – if it's the wrong read or something like that, not only am I getting judged, but he getting judged. If, if he throw the ball over to where I'm supposed to be at and it's the wrong route, I mean, that's a, not, that's a non-completion for him. So now the coach might think, you know, he he might not know necessarily where to go if it's the wrong read or whatever. But um, for you to be on page with the quarterback, I mean, it can literally save your job. Um, it can literally give you a job. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's real important to make sure that y'all – have the chemistry and y'all have the connection and you know that he knows you on a personal level to where like he he can trust on you he can count on you to where he can just throw it and I mean it, it's if, if you don't have some of those tangibles and everything like that like it's gonna it's gonna be hard for you it's gonna be a long camp because if you're not putting nothing on film then I mean it's just you just a body like they're not really too worried about you like that by the second week you know they kind of know you either here or you not now whether it be high school, college, even in the NFL, you've been you've been pretty well recognized for your hands. I mean, that's just something that you have. Whether it be a gift, whether it be something that you worked on, um, you 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 catch the ball. You don't drop the ball. You you got these kind of crazy catches. You got highlight reel catches. Guys coming in, t grabbing this over the top of guys jumping forty inches and mossing them when they're the corners your size. Where did that skill come from of catching? Is it just like focus? Is it practice over time? Is it, yeah, you're lucky and you just have good hands. Well, where, where did that come from and how much, like, do you work on that? Uh, it's a combination of everything, uh, of everything a little bit. Um, I, obviously, you know, it, it's a skill to catch, but, um, you know, uh, starting off at a young age, you know, I, I felt like it was kind of instilled. I mean, we, I had a lot of male cousins. We all played basketball, all played football and everything like that. So, I mean, it's just you compete against them to jump, uh, the timing and everything like that. So, I mean, you got that. And But then also, like, when getting to college and everything like that, I mean, it, it's – you know you're going across the middle. So, I mean, that you know people are just as fast as you, just as good. So, you know that they're going to have tight coverage and everything like that. So, I mean, why not make those spectacular catches and everything like that? So, I mean, you got to have a want, a will, and a drive, you know, to make the catches that nobody else will. Because, I mean, honestly – that those type of guys stick around for a long period of time. Um, I do some type of catching drill probably or hand drill probably four to five times a week, um, whether that's jugs, uh, whether that's some type of eye training, um, whether it's catching punts. Um, so, I mean, are you always working on your craft because, I mean, it, like I, you can have one bad day and it, and it all be – be over if if that's your first day on a job and you're not catching well regardless of whatever i mean it, it, it could be it could be done so i mean you you got to kind of train it and make sure you know drops happen and everything like that just you know just it's a, it's a focus it's a lap a lap of focus i mean a hand placement um and really i mean if you focus and you know your hands are right and everything like that you, you'll make the tough grabs and everything like that but you gotta want to and you gotta work at it but uh i definitely do all types of different kind of catching drills throughout the week. 
Gotcha. Now, regarding like your body now, like taking care of it as a pro, how different is it like you taking care of your body today as a pro versus where it was just kind of the grind mentality of you in high school or even in college where the college level, they were forcing you to do whatever you need, like whatever they wanted you to do as a team. But now as a pro doing what you know you need to do, how different is that for you to take ownership of your body? It's different. I think younger, uh, when I was younger, I really wasn't paying attention to it. Um, it was kind of like, yeah, hey, I'd be all right. Like you just kind of go, go, go. And then, you know, once you hit the pro level, it's different. They're stronger, they're faster, um, they hit harder. So, you know, your body takes a toll and everything like that. So you might need extra work to get something done, whether that's more massaging, whether that's more stretching, more sleep, uh, your food wise and everything like that. You kind of get in the routine and the habit um, of when you know your body is going to be operating at optimal level and everything like that so i mean and it just you have to figure out and find that and everybody has their own thing that gets them ready and everything like that but um it's just a lot of hands-on stuff you got to be in tune with it you got to know yourself know your body and uh it's a lot of sacrifices honestly um sometimes it may be just more sleeping so i mean you might just have to not necessarily go over as many plays right then and there that night or staying up past 12 uh, overworking yourself or, you know, cutting it off at, at 11, cutting it off at 1030 to go down and go to sleep, maybe waking up a little bit early and get getting started early uh, with going over stuff. So, I mean, you just you just got to know what works for you and uh, get in a routine and it's trying out different stuff. Um, I've looked into, you know, Tom Brady, he, he sleeps 10 plus hours every night like in a whole sleeping suit. Like, I mean, if he were, he's working and operating at that high level and everything like that, you know, sleep matters to him. So, I mean, it just, every everybody's different, but you got to find out what works. So whether that's like, I, I know I get a lot of massages and a lot of uh, stretching and a lot of recovery stuff, a lot of pool workouts, workouts, you know, just to take the weight and pressure off my bones and everything just because I know if I'm feeling better you know I play better I'll get warmed up quicker and everything like that so I mean it's just you just gotta know what you like and know what your body needs and everything like that and paying attention to it now I, I could I could attest to this this man could sleep anywhere anywhere doesn't matter it can, it can go down anywhere I do not care <laughs> um, I like that to our hour and a half, I'm good. Yeah, not only can you sleep anywhere, you will eat like a like an offensive lineman. Uh, that's that. Uh, that's not Nebraska. I mean, you, you out here eating some, some some pretty good stuff. So I mean, your appetite it, it'll go. Uh, do you, do you miss Bravo though? Do you got a Bravo out there? Don't even get me started. Like I have no problem coming there for a week just just for Bravo. I have no problem at all. Uh, I was talking to uh, – man, Payne was on my team uh, in the uh, XFL. Oh, really? And, man, when, when we came home and everything, I went I went out to Bravo. I wasn't playing. Like, it – I didn't care where he was at. I, went, I had my sister bring it bring it to me, and I, I had it when we was home. So, it's it's a necessity, man. That, that place is it's, – it's different. You got to have that. Connor, Connor says you, he owes you – you owe him a, a meal at Bravo right now. He says you, you, you do. All right, that's fine. <laughs> um, so I think it's it's in, it's interesting to look at kind of like the, the approach over time where you know like you're an athlete and you can kind of get through some of the grind of the high school the college level and not taking care of yourself then it comes into taking more care of yourself as you as you become a pro um, whether it be rest or recovery study all of those things where do you go for like a mental escapism like where do you go for your time are you a video game guy like what, what is the thing that you do just to kind of like wind down and relax um, a couple things. Uh, lately, like in, in, I would say in this last past year, like I've picked up, uh, like bowling and like roller skating, just to kind of like get away. Um, it's something different. Get your mind off of it. I know when I started training, I also like go read a book. So if if I gotta take an hour and a half for for me time or whatever, I'll I'll read something. Um. I'll get on, I might watch Netflix or some type of show or something like that, just to kind of get your mind off off of things, just to reset a little bit. But um, you, you got to have those, your time to where you step away. That's been a, a, a crucial factor that I found out with my first year in the league, because it's a lot, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot on your mind. You're thinking a lot. 
And I mean, if, if your mind is not right and everything like that, it, 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 you'll be messed up and you just don't want to have bad days at all. So, I mean, you taking personal time, even if it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes all time uh, outside of the, the, the day just to, to get a reset. I mean, it helps a lot, but I really. Now, it's, it's so true. I, I think one of the things that's interesting about you, and I don't think people understand that is you're an all in guy. Like you're a pro athlete. That's who you are. That's what you've lived in. That's the way you looked at it. You've never tried to like, um, like to do too many things at one time. You're, you're, you're a very solely focused individual. That's why you've always been. That's why I asked about like the escapism because there's a lot of kids and a lot of athletes that are younger than you now that are doing a lot of stuff to kind of get away from the, the, the stress of sports, but that they're not really putting in enough time to begin with. Mm-hmm. So they really haven't like even tipped that scale yet. It's like, I, I know me, like, sometimes, like, if I'm not really feeling like uh, like bowling or skating or nothing like that, like, I really don't like to move because we move all day and you're always on a go. So, I mean, just peeing off my feet, go get a pedicure or something like that. Like, just something relaxing just to make sure, you know, your body is into it. And it's also good maintenance because we on our feet a lot. We run a lot and everything like that. So, I mean, it's just, it's just smaller things. But it's – you just have to know – like what's your pressure point to where you're like okay like I'm done or like I, I need a reset and it's I have a reset every day in training camp just to make sure that you know I'm not just going through the motions and overlooking the plays to where like I see it but it's not really sticking so but I mean it's just it's just it's really just getting in a routine and just making sure that you know you're in your best possible form at all times and and it's hard it's not easy it's, it's a it's trial and error with stuff but I mean you'll find some things that you like and you find some things that you don't like but you get really in tune with yourself and uh, I mean it's it's all about you at that point because I mean if you're not putting the work in and everything like that I mean you won't be there long absolutely now we have a couple questions here and I wanted to give everybody a chance while I ask this question to DeMorne um write your questions in the chat and then we'll try to hit them up uh you know, before we, we shut it off for today. But one of the questions was, is like, what, what types of books do you read, um, you know, on your, on your free time? Um, it just depends. Uh, I have like a book list that of books that I, that I want to read, um, motivational stuff, training, mental, um, spiritual, um, it it just depends. Food, nutrition, uh, just, just little things that I that I'm intrigued about, or something that I want to know about. I got a couple books on investments. I got a couple books on playing chess. Um, I got a couple books on like on on war, just on house strategies and everything like that. Um, so I mean, it just depends. Uh, I have I have a, I have a list of of things that I that I'll get to or I want to read and everything like that. Awesome. Yeah, and I think um, it it's really unique is because like the diver- the interest that you have in like your financial investment too, because of the environments that you're in, the way that you look at, the way that you look at like kind of taking care of your own money is a really, really big deal. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of, that's a unique position that a lot of athletes are in. Um, what, one of the questions with Cam was, what do you think separated yourself? Like, what did you focus on? What separated yourself when you were in college that everybody else was good? How did you stand out? Um, I wanted it more. Um, like, like I knew I really, I, well, my freshman year went crazy. My sophomore year, I got hurt. My junior year, you know, my mental really wasn't back. I was still like nervous about my knee. My senior year was probably my most complete year and everything like that. So, I mean, I knew my, what I was up against early on and where I wanted to go and everything like that. And it, I enjoy myself and have fun, but I mean, when it was time to work and when it was time to do what was needed, um, I can I can switch it off and focus on that and go that route and sacrifice the that or some free time or or going out or doing whatever like my friends wanted to do or slack off to put in the extra work to where I show up at practice and I'm, I'm beating dudes left and right to where it's translating over in the game to where I'm going to get some of the top dudes in the nation and beating them and everything like that because I mean every Saturday what was was food was an opportunity to to put food on the table for your family for for my family or uh put what I have to offer to NFL teams I mean I I felt like I I recognized that at an early age and you know I just focused down and you know uh, let me sacrifice this now so where I can live and be and do what I want to do later on I rather do all the work early on than not have to wait at the last minute and struggle and maybe not 
make it when I could have done it earlier. Yeah, what were some of those sacrifices? Uh, the question is, is what are the sacrifices that were able to put you in that position? What were the hardest ones for you to kind of give up? Um, family stuff, you know, coming coming back home on breaks, um, you know, coming back home. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of, like, summer school. Uh, well, you know, we, at, at the end of the summer, you know, a lot of people had a longer summer break than I did. I would often go back to school earlier to get classes knocked out, to kind of graduate early, to focus on ball. My wide receiver coach was out there. So, I mean, I was getting my game right. I was getting my mental right and everything like that. Um, not going to all the parties or not going over to people's houses just for small gatherings, not talking on the phone to people as long or anything like that. Just, just small sacrifices just to, you know, making sure I cut that off and I got more time to give back to football, putting in or watching more film studying dudes what do they like to do um versus and catch what do they like to do versus press what do they do what do they look at versus off picking up on people's tendencies to where I could figure out a way to beat them to when I come up I know what they like to do I don't I know what they don't like to do and use it against them that's awesome man yeah one of the questions that just came in here from Blake was um how's the culture of the football program um at Nebraska in regards to the weight room? Like, how's the off-season strength program? What was it like in regarding, like, the buy-in, the team building? Um, what was that like for you? And I know you went through different coaches while you were there, and I know that very, very different, you know, uh, experiences. But what was that like for you? Uh, my freshman year uh, was completely different. They, they were on. It's like it, there was no – like, you had to lift. There was no slacking off. There was no – taking it easy like either you did it or you didn't and if you didn't it will be reported and now like you wouldn't get as much of a chance to play on the field like so I mean it, not necessarily a punishment but like a punishment um the rest of my years um it was different they pushed us it was a different type a different style of lifting um it was a first time you know uh head strength coach and everything like that he had a lot of learning he found out and everything like that but uh I mean that the the off season was was when you put the work on to make sure that your body was ready to go for the season. Um, and you know if if you slacking off then and there, you know your body might not be able to make it in the season. You might be more injury, uh, more prone to injuries or um, whatever. Like your body just wasn't durable. So I mean, each year, you know, uh, I came back with with to do something uh, different. Was that getting stronger, getting more explosive? Um, better conditioning when when we were running, making sure I was the first wide out or at least in the top three wide outs to, to finish first. Or if me and Stan uh, will go at it often all the time, it's just beating them in whatever drills and everything like that. So, I mean, it just it just pushed you um, to just to be a better, more complete athlete. And if you, if you weren't on that, if you weren't competing and everything like that, you wouldn't be on the field. So, I mean, there was really no – slacking off or taking off or anything like that like if if you weren't abiding in and if you weren't putting in the work like you weren't seeing the field period how much do people in your mind think that like because I think from a coaching perspective there's a lot of people that think that buy-in's a hard thing to kind of get athletes to do but how much is in my my standpoint I don't think it's that difficult so I find it to be interesting that a lot of coaches harp and spend a lot of time trying to build buy-in with with kids when in reality it really just comes down to like here's the standard of excellence in which we believe in. And if we hold you accountable to that, you're either you're in or you're out. And we let you guys choose the level of work that you're ready to be in because that's going to drive, we're going to drive the ship to this, whether you're here or not. And it's either you jump on board or you're swimming really fast to catch up. If not, you're going to be left at the dock. What's that like for you as a player? Cause maybe this, I'm flipping this a little bit, talking to the coaches now. Is it, is it more of like just, you know, what's that, what's that like for you as a player? Is it like, oh, you really need to get to know your coach? Or is it just a matter of like, you know, at the end of the day, even if you don't like what he's doing, you're still in because you know you want something. It's a, it's a, I feel like it's a trust thing. It's a give pool. Um, the coach has to understand you and see you as an individual. And uh, y'all know you, 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 through various things and activities, you know, you'll connect to where you're open up to the strength coach or coaches um and you'll get to they'll learn you you'll learn them um but I mean it's a mutual agreement but the part that's not mutual is like you got to be willing to to open to what the coach is saying to what he's trying to do to see 
where he's trying to go. And it's not necessarily a now type of thing. It's just, uh, are, are you committed enough to, you know, to follow direction? Um, and I mean, that's honestly like really like what it is. A lot of people um, are prideful and they let their pride kind of get into it or they let the uh, things that they don't want to do kind of get into it. And it's not really like not, it's not really about that. He just wants to see, can't like, if we, if we go to battle today, will you be there? Are you willing to do the things to, to, to sacrifice to get to that? And some people are, some people aren't. Some people take it personal when it's really not a personal thing. It's really something minor, just a buying by uh, rules and following direction. If you do that, things will be a lot easier. Trust will be established way more easier and what you will get what you want out of it a lot easier. I mean, it's just, but people, a lot of people just are prideful and just don't, which I, I don't, I don't understand why at all either. Good. All right, cool. Rapid fire questions uh, real quick. We'll see. And then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Sounds good. Yep. That's fine. You got it. Favorite player of all time. Offense or defense? Offense. Michael Vick. Um, favorite pregame soundtrack? Soundtrack? I don't know. I listen to a lot of DMX, so probably anything with DMX, you're good to go. <laughs> Day or night game? College or pro? What are we talking about? College. Mid evening. Mid evening. So, day game. Day game. <laughs> Best post game meal. The water and whole wings. Gotta love it. If not, I, I'll take a steak. I'll take a steak. Steak is cool. You got one route. Game on the line. Where Where am I at? What's the What's the yardage? I need. Where Where we at? I mean, I mean, you're. Your 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 fourth and goal from the twelve, and there's three seconds left on the clock. Three seconds left. I mean, am I outside or inside? Where are you playing? You choose. Slot corner route. If there's one player that you're gonna that you want to moss in the NFL, who is it? That I want to moss. Yeah. Honey Badger, he with the Chiefs. They, I mean, we're going to see them twice, him. You got it, man. Awesome, man. Listen, uh, what's the – I guess the last question is probably not a rapid-fire one. Um, what, what's really changed for you since you became a dad? The little things. You became uh, way more patient than, uh, than I already was. Um, I enjoy the little things in life a lot more. A smile, her 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 laugh. Um, excuse me. Um, I can walk into a room. She could be doing something, and she'll hear me talking, and just like she'll drop anything she's doing, and literally try and get my direction. Um, so I mean, it's just it's life is a beautiful thing. I mean, when when you when you have a kid, it's it's something special. It changes you for the good. That's awesome, man. All right. Well, from me to everybody here, I uh, I appreciate you. I love you, man. I know that um, you're going to do some great things. It's just the beginning uh, of a long career, uh, but you've always been a pro in my mind. I just appreciate keep up. Got you. Appreciate you. Appreciate everybody. I'll talk to you guys soon. See you.